what's what's the vision for it? Like, what's the what's the the long term just vision that you just see for the urban educator? Like, what what do you what do you see? What do you envision? Um, so God still making it clear for yeah, me. It's that, like it's puzzle cool. piece. Then I'm that's still cool. missing some pieces. That's cool. That's cool. Um, because in a like in a perfect world, I would travel to different inner city schools and coach teachers on how to properly educate those mm. black kids. That's dope. But <laughs> <laughs> that takes me away from being in the trenches with my babies. So I have to, I'll, if God let me design it, I would be a dean part-time. So I would still do this work in East Cleveland. And then the other part of my time, I would travel to you know different areas and just really get down to the work. Um, I also wouldn't mind teaching just like racial bias and equity classes to white teachers because I have no problem having those conversations. Um, so, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm completely done with teaching white people about their racism. I'm, I can't I'm, be I'm done because they're still in the classrooms. But here's that the is, thing. That is, that's where I'm like. But here's the thing, though. That's not our responsibility to teach them about their racism. That's on them. They gotta. They have to. <laughs> you're they, right. No, they no, have, no. You're they right. Have to do that. You're correct. You're correct. However, how selfish of me to not correct something that is over thirty black kids right now. Like even before I became an administrator, I was stepping up. Like there's a teacher I can think of in particular who was right across the hall from me, who I repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly helped and coached in that manner because. If I don't do it, then all these biases just continue to educate our kids. True. So it's like, it's not everybody's res- responsibility, but if God put that on you, then it's like, yeah, I'm going to speak up. True. Because it's too many schools who are just infested with racism. And it's just polished racism, upscale, you know what I'm saying? So you don't really see it right away because it's not the N-word, but it's everything but. And so... If I have, if I'm at that table, I'm speaking on it, whether it's my job or not. But that's just no, that's no, that's no, just no. like my purpose. No, that's you know good. what I'm saying. That, that, that's good because you listen. I'd rather have people like you in those buildings mm-hmm. as opposed to people who was in those buildings and afraid to say something. Right. Especially when it comes to racism, man. You gotta call it what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. You yes. have to you have to be fearless in that. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. and like advocating for that. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah, I just I, I got I got I got no, but I with it because it was when you doing it every day yeah. all day yes and you know you doing it at a bunch of different angles you know it, it can be get trying but like I said yeah. I had I knew for I knew for me that it was slowly becoming like you know um, detrimental to my yeah to and my it really depends health. on your environment too for sure like luckily I teach in a school where the our staff matches our population and so. I'm not fighting as often those type of battles, so I'm not worn out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, um, we have a lot of black teachers, yeah. um, and I'm proud of that. 